I'm going to share my three tips and tricks for painting 112 scale models of houses and buildings. And one of these tips could possibly save you some money when you're building your next 112 scale project. So stick around. I'm going to be painting the 112 scale model of the Sears kit house that I've been building. Sears kit houses were sold between 1908 and 1942 by Sears Robot. The kits would arrive in 30,000 pieces by rail car. Customers would assemble the kits, which took approximately three months. Everything you needed to build the house was included in the kit. Lumber, roofing, doors, windows, hardware, and even a doorbell. The kits had 30,000 pieces, which included 750 pounds of nails and 27 gallons of paint. Today, when you need some nails or paint, we just head down to one of the big box stores. There's usually one just a short drive away. Need building materials? These big box stores have dozens of aisles stacked to the rafters with anything you might need. You name it. Lumber, nails, hardware, gardening supplies, appliances, and of course, paint. Everything's ready for you to buy to take home immediately to get your home project done. No fuss, no muss. There are thousands of colors of paint to choose from. And the perfect paint for your job. Indoor, outdoor, semi-gloss or gloss, whatever you need. So here's tip number one. Did you know that you could match any color of paint without having to use one of those paint chip things? All you need is a small one by one inch sample of the color. So if you need to repair holes in the walls of your house and you need some touch up paint, just cut a small square in the corner of the wall where it's not too noticeable and take it in to the paint store. You can patch and repaint this area later anyways because you're going to have the touch-up paint. If you're working on a miniature building or dollhouse that you're trying to restore to the original condition and you want to match the color perfectly, take a sample into the paint store and they will be able to match it for you. Computers are awesome these days. We're here at the Kelby General Store which was built around 1906. Back in these days, if you lived in a rural area when you needed paint or brushes or anything for that matter, you would go to the general store in your area. In the store you could find anything you might need. Food, building supplies, farming supplies, clothing. Probably you just buy the material because most women knew how to sew back in those days and they'd make their own dresses. Women would often bake their own bread from scratch in those days and flour was sometimes packed in cloth bags with various prints and the women would use the cloth from the bag to make their clothing and dresses. You could even find state-of-the-art high-tech products such as these cameras. The general store was the center of the community. This one operated a gas station where people could buy fuel for their generators. Electricity wasn't available in this area until the 1950s. Could you imagine no electricity? I mean, how would you charge your smartphone so you could watch YouTube? The store contained a living area for the owners and had several rooms that operated as a hotel for people passing through. Traveling salesmen, railroad crews, farm hands, school teachers, mill hands, settlers, surveyors, all made the hotel their home at one time or another. Whether you were stopping by the store for supplies supplies, picking up your mail, yeah the general store also housed the local post office, or even just stopping by to say hi to your neighbors and catch up on the local gossip and have maybe a friendly game of checkers on this homemade checkerboard made from the top of a wooden crate and some painted tree branches, the general store was the center of the community. If you want to see what some of the other general stores looked like and want to see what life was like 100 years ago, I'll leave a link at the end of this video. I'll tell you a true story about a candy store and a murder. You don't want to miss it. So check it out at the end of this video. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button. It really makes my day when I see somebody actually liked one of my videos. And if you like my stories about life 100 years ago and you want to see the progress I'm making on the 112 scale model of the Sears kit house I'm building, perhaps consider Consider subscribing that'd be awesome so let's get started and paint the walls to the house and here is tip number two try to paint all the assemblies of your project prior to putting them together it just makes life so much easier than trying to paint everything once it's already assembled if you watched the previous video, I explained how we were staggering the siding boards. I'll leave a link in the description for you. This is so the joints don't appear as prominently. This is also how it would have been done if this had been a real house. It would help keep the rain and water from getting behind the walls. The first step is to add filler to the cracks in the walls. I'm just using normal wall filler. You can use a putty knife like this, or if you don't have one, just use one of your popsicle sticks and cut the end square. Also, in addition, I always like to have a wet paper towel on hand. 
Remove the lid to the filler. It's important to always make sure you keep the lid sealed because it'll dry out and once it dries out, it's no good anymore. So make sure when you're finished to put the lid on really tight. And don't use too much filler. Use the minimum amount required to fill the crack. It's kind of like icing a cake. After I put the filler on, I like to use a wet towel to wipe off any excess filler. The more filler you leave on your project, the more filler you're going to have to sand off later. So it's a good idea to use as little filler as possible. Some people will put the filler on and let it dry, sand it off, and then refill it a second time to try and make the joints disappear completely. Here we can see the filler has dried and now I'm going to be using a very fine grit sandpaper, or in this case I'm using a sanding sponge to remove the excess filler. Make sure you use a very fine grit sandpaper. You don't want to put scratches in your wood by using sandpaper this too coarse. I'm going to start painting the wall assembly. I'm using an indoor latex water-based paint. Make sure you give it a good mix before you actually start painting your project. Try not to put too much paint on your brush. You want a nice even coverage on the surface. You don't want any globs of paint on your project. And here's my third tip. Rather than mixing my own colors, I use regular household paint. This gives me more of a selection of colors than I end up with the exact color I want. I save money by buying sample jars of paint. It's much less money than having to go and buy the whole quart of paint or liter if that's how they sell it in your area. So check to see if they sell sample jars of paint at your local paint store. And there you have it, the first two sections are painted. In the next video, I'm gonna be painting the windows and doors, and hopefully we'll be ready to attach these two walls to the house. And that's the other video I told you about, about general stores and life 100 years ago, the one about the candy store and a murder. So go check it out. We'll see you in the next video.